What's up guys, this is Naru Samurai here. Welcome to the dojo and today we're finally going to be talking about overdress and I thought the best way to do this is to collab with the one, the only, Echo CBG. Echo, how about you introduce yourself? Hey guys, my name is Echo, aka Echo CBG. Thank you very much for, for, for Naru for having me. Uh, you guys can mostly catch us on Echo CBG on YouTube or on twitch.tv. Uh, forward slash EKO underscore CBG. Yeah, uh, we got everything down the below so you guys can uh, catch us on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. We have the whole shebang. But finally today, I decided to go over Overdress. We're going to collab a little bit about it and talk about our plans overall on both our channels on where we're going to continue on since we did kind of start towards the end of V series and going on to Overdress, what our plans going further are. So. Yeah, okay, so oh, go ahead, go right ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say so obviously like you were saying, so if I could we just wanted to like have a little sit down, have a little talk, because obviously with everybody making their own independent news videos this week, uh, as you guys could have seen we've watched we streamed uh the original reveal stream together with GD Plays Games or Greg, uh Sean is win winning image and Alex and Philip as top deck heroes. Obviously links to all of them are gonna be uh, below on both both videos. Um so following that we obviously got really excited about overdress. Uh, so we kind of wanted to sit down together and kind of share our thoughts on the things we know so far and obviously get some uh, feedback from you guys as well. Um, and I guess the right place to start for us is like, I guess the big burning question for everybody. So we're switching from our 24 to 25, 24, but you know, with extras clan system uh, into a new like color system. Yeah, yeah. Also, so we're going from system. the 24 plus collab clans into only five nations. So that actually uh, is kind of well five five in five Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> five in Bermuda plus collab nations. I, I'm not that sure about. We have no information yet. Yeah, that those are fine. All right, those are collabs. They get barely any support. Probably once every two years. But you know, I'm just being hypothetical about it. Um, overall, kind of excited. Not gonna lie, because this actually leads into a little bit more um, stapling in the deck, if you can say, because. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I'm seeing it for B premium and premium, we have a lot more things coming for like plans to make them better, but they're not going to take up the overall aesthetic of the clan. Mm. But for standard, this is a big thing because overall every set's going to have support. <coughs> um, it's going to not give a lot of support, but just enough so that you can keep enhancing your deck to a certain point. Mm. No, for sure. I think the interesting part of that as well is like. It kind of helps players who maybe so far have only main, say, one clan. Say, you know, you're uh, a Spikes main or, or a Mega Colin main or a Tashikaze main. Um, like, so far, you've been getting like one wave of support a year. And if you didn't like it, tough. Uh, I guess you gotta wait till next year to hopefully get support you enjoy. But it kind of made it very difficult for these kinds of players to stick around because it meant for like one month a year they're excited for everything about to be released another month they're excited playing it and then they realize that the next wave of support isn't even anything and now they're stuck for a year yeah so it's yeah, actually gonna like get that. everybody something but i guess one of the uh good and slightly worrying things about the shift and i was wondering what you were thinking about that as well is the idea that now that we have support every set or rather than in cases like say brandgate or dark nations or dark states I don't think it's maybe as big a problem, but in cases like, you know, uh, like Stokia and maybe Kita Sanctuary, when you've got, like, not like two to three clans or three to four clans, you're looking at, you know, five to six clans, all with, like, wildly different play styles, meshing together in presumably archetype-based support. But there's mm -hmm. been, a, I think, a lot of people worried that it's going to make clans lose their clan identity. Like, how do you, how do you feel about that so far? How do you think we're going to handle that? So, currently, I was actually looking at that, like, not going to lie. Uh... Mm -hmm some clans will be kind of simple to keep their clan identity like mm. if we look at dragon empire dragon empire has access to um almost the same thing we have control 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 plus power buffs control and mm. um multi-attack mm. but as we get into things like stoichia like you were saying there's a lot of uh mixture that we haven't seen before mm. aqua force is a clan that multi-attacks by uh series of attacks right mm. but great nature's multi-attack is based off uh drawing and removing them from the field mm. so i think that they're enough different that they want to keep that kind of sense of um <clears throat> how's the word equality with mm. them without having to like remove like the main point of that clamp mm. 
So, uh, so I, I think archetypes are going to still be seen as diversity. So you're going to see archetypes that are the clans that you remember. Hmm. But uh, I don't see it being a big deal in standard. In premium, though, I'm kind of curious on how Sokia is going to work. Because that would mean that like, a lot of clans have a little bit extra stuff. But I guess more will be explained later. Because hmm. I guess so. I, I guess the takeaway is basically trying to think of um, like each archetype as like an unofficial clan. So you're mm -hmm. gonna, you're not gonna have. So for example, you're not going to. I'm gonna need to actually put a light on, so it's reasonable. So you're not gonna have clans in the same way that you're not going to have, you know, for example, Aqua Force is Aqua Force, but you might have mm -hmm. a, a variant of Stokia that relies on, you know, restanding units uh, multiple times. But I think, like you were saying, I think it'd be interesting in premium when, you know, for example. Like, you know, if you have Stokia cards, how are you going to have cards in premium, say, Mega Colony that function like standard Aqua Force or like standard Grand mm -hmm. Blue? Like, how is that going to mesh? Because those are, like I said, like two separate nations brought together. Whereas, you know, everything else kind of keeps its own identity. So, like, you know, Key to Sanctuary stays Key to Sanctuary. Like, it, 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 the playstyle probably isn't going to shift too, too much. But I think mm -hmm. it'll be interesting since, obviously, with. I know we're going to get onto lore later on, but with lore of like clans kind of fusing together more. I think it's interesting to see how they decide to make almost like multi-clan cards in a sense, because they're going to have to be very generic support for premium as to not, you know, make premium standard plus again, I guess. Yeah, I get you. I get you. But, but overall, you know, that's all depending on how the standard first rollout's going to be. Mm. We're kind of playing it by ear, mm. but, uh, you know, we just have to be kind of hopeful and like, believe in the best of what they're going to start off with. Hmm. But I was going to say, speaking of like transitioning, like, because we were obviously talking about like how the new stand is going to affect, or like how the, the nation format is going to interact with the clan formats. Like, with that in mind, like obviously we're looking at potentially having up, or not up to, but at the moment starting off with three separate formats. You know, so obviously we're so, going to have a premium, V premium, and standard. Yes. Hmm. Actually, that's Kind of scary, not gonna lie. Um, the three formats I think are overall gonna be kind of overwhelming because we've noticed that a lot more people like V Premium in comparison to Premium, mm. but a good portion of us like Premium. Mm. Now, guys, I, I'm a little biased, I'm gonna be honest here. <laughs> premium to me is the more um, competitive format, the more mm. uh, serious card game format. Mm. But I. I do think they're going to be like the Sunday events in comparison to the D standard on Saturdays during VCSs. Because mm. um, oh, go right ahead. Sorry, no, I was going to say like, I think the interesting thing is going to be because I know we're seeing a lot of players worrying about that quite a bit. Um, yeah. You know, they're going, oh, I don't, I don't want to have standard, or I don't want to play a system where everything's generic. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. But I think the nice thing for those people is that they have, if they want to dip their feet into premium, they can. Uh, from mm -hmm. what we're seeing, at least for the first wave, uh, standard is going to be super, super affordable to buy into. Uh, so I think it's going to effectively remove a lot of the barrier for people to get into it. Uh, and the thing people have to understand is when you support standard, you're also supporting premium. And for people who don't want any of this new uh, nation format, they still get to keep V premium, which isn't... I, I think that they kind of may, may have made a bit of a mistake with the branding because despite being called V premium, uh, it's basically V series as we know it. So to people who like current standard, they do still have V Premium, uh, because despite the name, it doesn't involve any strides and it doesn't involve any of the DRA support. It is strictly V era. So for any of those Jeez. who wish to stay around that area, and we do have confirmed support for that era, uh, for at least twice a year, uh, with and what we've had so far revealed with you know with Tetra Drive and Raging Fall, uh, it looks like we might be getting kind of the rest of the cards that we may have skipped, or we might be getting more fan favorites. And for people who want to keep experiencing the game as as it has been so far. Uh, v Premium is still, I think, an option for those people. Yeah, yeah. The branding, though, does sound kind of weird, calling it V Premium. I think it would have been a lot better to just call it V Series. Mm. Well, like v and format. then, you know, D Format, V Series, mm. and Premium, like, that's all fine. Mm. Uh, v Format sounds good, too, not gonna lie. Mm. Uh, but, overall, I do like that they're continuing on, because there's still a lot of nostalgia cards that we missed. I mean, I still would be interested if we got Brawlers for Narukami, not gonna lie. Die Kaiser, boys. Die Kaiser. It kind of does make me think that they're still gonna be thinking about the clans when doing D format, because they're gonna be referencing them in mm. B series. Because I, I think one of the things I'll be really excited for 
Um, and I know because we're not going to be talking about any necessarily hopes for the future yet. Because uh, I think mm -hmm. at the moment we're maybe a little premature having like hopes for Overdress. Uh, because we know so little about it. Uh, although, mm -hmm. for sure, that's going to be a video we make closer to release day. Uh, like, for sure. There's like more realistic hopes for the future of Overdress. But at the moment, I think the interesting thing about the way they're handling it is because we're going so far into the future, uh, and with the confirmed comics and extra lore, uh, that we're going to be getting for Overdress. I think it'll be really interesting to have almost cards that are mentioned in Overdress that will then come out as support for Viera or Premium. Because obviously where they're set in the future, it'd be nice to basically like hear Legends during Overdress and then be able to like take them in their prime and play them during Viera, if you get me. Yeah. So you're going to have this like epic dragon from, you know, 3,000 years ago as he achieves divinity and then you can have like a new Zilli a new descendant Zillion come out in Viera. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you hear about yeah, the like yeah. legendary acts and then those become sets for, v for Viera. I think that'd be like super cool. I think that'd be like a nice way to connect them and maybe give the standard players another reason to dip towards premium. Mm -hmm. Because if you're only going to jump, make the jump timescape, I think it, it might be useful if you're going to make such a push for the lore. And like they said, they wanted the anime to be... Um, an enjoyable experience for even those who don't necessarily like the game or know the game. So I think that'll be a good like jumping off point to get those people to then try the card game with already somewhat of a connection to those units. So I think that'll be yeah. super interesting to see if they can pull that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like like I said, this is a good time for everybody because uh, if you're starting to feel that the premium is dying out, mm -hmm. you're only 16 G-Zone cards away from building a premium deck. And then for people that are doing D format, they get a little bit of everything. They get a little taste of everything, what they like, what they dislike. Hmm. And then when they see that they want to be more close to one archetype, there hmm. is a clan based on it. And then they can move between the formats down to premium. Yeah, 100%. But I think as well, like, just because I know we're, we were always talking about it just off, off stream, just before, or off, uh, off of the recording, uh, we were earlier talking about potentially, uh, or not potentially, the, the different mechanics. So it's like we went over, so premium, uh, if we have a quick run through down on the mechanics again of the formats, we have premium that is as is anything ever made, ever printed is in this format. We yes. have V premium, which is like I said, is Viera, and we have the nation based standard format. But interestingly enough, as with every era, uh, we have multiple we have multiple new mechanics. Uh, so of course we have the persona ride we've been seeing, that we don't necessarily know anything about yet, um, and the over triggers that we'll get onto later. But I think the big reveal, at the moment at least, has been very much the, the right deck. Or the right zone. Ah, yes, the right, deck. the right deck. That is interesting deck. enough, standard exclusive, which I think is the first time this kind of mechanic implementation has ever happened in standard. Because usually they, they do work retroactively. So imaginary gifts <laughs> were introduced and they work in premium. GR was introduced, when strides were introduced, they worked, or well, I suppose it wasn't a format divide. But when strides were introduced, even though they removed extreme fight, you could still stride an extreme fight. Like, so, I think this is the first time, at least to my memory, that a mechanic has been introduced that doesn't work retroactively on previous formats. So what do you think about the mechanic and what we know about it and the implications of that potentially going forward? So, I'm glad you brought that up. So with that new mechanic with the, uh, the ride zone and things like that, I do feel like it may just stay as a standard ability. Hmm. Uh, looking at it, if we were to get that in premium or V premium, uh, it'll be kind of crazy, not gonna lie. Hmm. It gives us access to other cards. We makes Ezo a lot better. Makes getting Percival a lot better. Like there's all these different problems or like situations that come with having a right zone now. Ultimate Stride. <laughs> exactly. So it's if free. you need to ultimate, if you need to <laughs> ultimate stride or actually go into your progenitor, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. because you, all you have to do is go into your right zone and then discard the one that's in your hand. Hmm. But this does give kind of a small insight, in my opinion, hmm. to what the D format would be, because I feel D format is going to be a lot less. Uh, I do think it's going to be combo heavy on rear guards, but the, I don't think the Vanguard is going to be the majority or like the leading factor hmm. in the Vanguard playstyle, like how it's always been before. Because <clears throat> I think as well, like the, the interesting thing is, that I think. I, can't, I think it might have been, um, when we were talking about it, I, can't, I, think, I can't remember if it was you or, or Philip from Top Deck Heroes that was mentioning it, but the one thing that really piqued my interest is the idea that because we're now guaranteed rides, it suddenly frees up a whole lot. It, it basically forever changes deck building. Because deck yes. building for consistency isn't a thing anymore. Like, there is no reason to include 
you know, 16 grade ones, like tw 10 grade twos, eight grade threes. That's not a reason anymore. Like effectively yeah. be every deck becomes a toolbox that you can kind of put together however you wish. Although the interesting thing I think to, to determine that is whether when we get the rulings on it and whether you have to um, announce which cards are going to be your right deck or whether that can change between games. I think that's going to be a massive factor in how that functions. But I think the amount of like pure space it frees up in every single deck list is kind of insane. And so I think they'll have to be a lot more careful in the future with like printing searches. So it'll be interesting to see those implications, especially if you know if cards are so strong that that searching them is discouraged. How is that then going to affect premium where they can be brought in and can be searched? Like I think that you know maybe like there I guess the balancing counterbalance is the fact that the right deck isn't there, so there isn't yeah. as much room for them. But I think like that single mechanic makes such a massive change in the game. They'll be really interesting to see how it evolves. Yeah. Now while you're saying that, I was actually thinking about this is that. Uh, we still don't know what the Persona right is, right? Mm. But looking at it, if we have a right deck, this kind of the Persona right may be the one thing stopping us from mm. removing all grade threes from the deck if we just need one. Mm. So, like, if you're allowed to have a grade three in the right deck, and I was going to discard to go into that grade three, mm. what's stopping me from running out of grade threes? And looking at it, it most likely will be the Persona right ability. Mm. Because I think that, like you said, because judging by the name, if we had to speculate, given that we had Persona Blast previously, we, we've had, uh, you know, like a special kind of blast before, and I, I can't remember if Persona Flip was a thing. Uh, like we had to flip uh, it with the same name. I Persona remember. Flip was for G units. Yeah, with the same name, right? Like, yeah. And then there was Persona Blast, which was yeah. discarding a copy of the card that's on your Vanguard Circle, which was, <clears> like, I think the first one was Dragonic Overlord, the end. Yeah, it was the end of Phantom Blaster Overlord. Yeah, it was the same set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it was um, Awakening of Twin Blades, I think. Like, way back, like, BTO5, yep. I think? Was it BTO5 or 6 or something? Like, yeah, that was ages like ago. I, I can't, I'm going to be honest, guys. I came in, um, we came out, and Revengers. So. It was it was Awakening of Twin Blades, damn it. That's, that's all I know. <laughs> it was the MLB set. Uh, but I think, because uh, I think the cool part, like you were saying, is judging by that, I think that the safe assumption to make is that we're looking at an environment where we have to rewrite the same unit, so almost like a pseudo ultimate stride but not really like in terms of how the mechanic functions like in terms of you have to have the same one i'm guessing that just by off the name i think that's a somewhat safe assumption to make i think otherwise it's yeah, gonna be very safe. confusing to players but yeah yeah i mean we're we are coming into assumptions here we notice that there's this big zone that's not been seen yet on the field that is very aesthetically displeasing to some people uh shout yeah, out to philip yeah. from top deck heroes who's very upset that it is in fact a square <laughs> yeah, if you guys if you guys were kind of curious, it was uh we were talking about how uh, the zone the, it's not it's not the shape of a card, and we took assumptions. Well, they kind of did the same thing for G zones at one point, but that's because it went off the field, so mm. uh, it was kind of okay. But mm. this one's just a full broad square square in the middle of like mm. the field. Like, why is it there? Mm. Now we could get like a little small zone, or it's a stage mm. for persona writing, but you know we still have no idea more information is going to be needed. Because, hmm. as also, speaking of, like, so now as far as that goes, the interesting thing about the ride zone as well is that they did clarify is just news to anybody who missed it, because I know there was a lot of, uh, some confusion and misinformation, is that as far as we know, you have to have four cards in there. They must be of different grades, so zero through to three. The one thing we don't, don't think we've had clarification on is whether you can have a grade four in there for main deck grade fours, if we do no, end up no, getting you those. Cannot. You can't. You, you okay. Cannot. Your your zero counts as your starter, so it's your starter and three other cards. Yeah, no, but because we know some of those cards have to be different grades. So I think interesting news will be if they have to be one through three, or if we get a lot hundred higher grades later on, what how that's going to function? Because we know also they're going to have to be a part of you. Uh, they, they, them and your main deck add up to fifty cards. They all yeah. have to be different grades. They must. This is actually an interesting key. So your starter goes there, and your starter then gets called to the Vanguard Circle. So that's that's where you get your starter from. So the nice little things like we found as well with the ride deck or the ride zone, rather, that's quite interesting, is that because they all have different grades and they're separate from your main deck, they must have different sleeves to your main deck. Mm -hmm. And but interesting enough, each one of those sleeves can actually be different. So if you have like a big sleeve collection, like some people have, like you can, <laughs> some people, uh, like some people have, you can technically flex them on your opponent. Uh, but the cool thing as well is they go to any given public zone. But if they were to be shuffled back into your deck, they actually go back into the ride zone. So it'll be interesting to see, like, 
because that means technically, I, I was thinking technically if this ever gets moved to premium, that could mean that decks like Gear Chronicle that shuffle your cards back into your opponent's deck could technically count as milling cards, but that would only that would be tied to the fact that they might end up bringing it to premium, but we don't know yet. But I was gonna say as well, like with the Rhine Zone, like how are you feeling on that so far? Like, cause I know we were talking about how it affects deck consistency, but like, what do you have any hopes of that ever getting brought into other standard uh, formats, or are you kind of hoping it so, stays like its own thing? The Rhine Zone, I do feel, will be not included in premium. I think it'll just stay in the standard format. Now, them saying that we don't know about 4s is probably telling me that they are not planning on using any grade 4s in the beginning of the standard format. It's going to probably be a later thing because, you know, we're going to an all-new kind of card game at the end of the day. It's it's Vanguard, but we're not getting any of the old nostalgia cards. Everything here is like new throughout, so there's no reason to be hitting a grade 4 so early. Hmm. But no, I feel it, I feel it. Because like, I guess it would just be a thing that like they'll probably errata once we get there if we do. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to because when we were talking about that earlier, like we were talking about uh, you know potentially reintroducing old cards or new returning cards, uh, which kind of sprawled on the discussion about the new law. So it's like we were saying earlier, like this is set three thousand years on Cray after G era, so presumably a small time skip on Earth, but nothing nearly as long, because I think OG to G era was a few hundred years on Cray, despite it only being three years on Earth. So. It's in terms of like the new law, so we've had obviously a bunch of, like we were saying, a bunch of the clans merged together into nations. We had our boy Chrono Jet sacrifice himself for the greater good. Let's let's pour let's pour one out for our boy. He'll be missed. I think the <laughs> the interesting thing I think as well will be like with the new law and with the new characters, because obviously we're, we are getting a brand new cast, uh, in, at least as far as we're aware, um, both in the anime and in the in the game, like. How do you think? Do you think that's going to have any implications, or were you excited for the new stuff? Because we've had confirmations on new uh, novels, new comics, new anime, of course, uh, animated by Clamp and um, obviously designed by Clamp and animated by Citrus. Ah uh, yes, Code Geass, let's go, man! Let's I love go, that. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah. So I'm kind of started off my channel because, like, you know, what am I like five, um, five videos in talking mm -hmm. about lore to deck profile? So I'm kind of happy that we're getting more lore. More things to talk about, more research to do. So overall, like I do love not storytelling, but more like world development. So if I can give a little bit of lore here and there before going into a deck profile, I think it would be awesome. And it's something I want to continue doing for my videos. Because hmm. I think like the interesting part for me, and it's one of the things I mentioned on my video, um, on my video for Overdress, where if we look at the at the names for the new trial decks, because I said as as they're trying to like implement the characters uh, in some capacity. Uh, interestingly enough, the Dark States one, uh, I believe it's called Tyrant Tiger or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, which to me, and this is this is I'm probably wrong with this, but the interesting part for me is even though we know it's spikes, the thing is with it being a nation-based deck, just because it's spikes doesn't mean we can't have other things. And I, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing I am. Uh, Chrono Jet Dragon has a rival, and with Chrono Jet gone, a certain feline character might be taking charge of Dark Zone, or Dark States, and you probably know who I'm thinking of. With a name like Tyrant Tiger, I am low-key hoping Chrono Fang makes some sort of- oh, Chrono ja yeah, Chrono Fang makes some sort of return. <laughs> like, in some form, dude, I want it. Dude, imagine old man Chrono Fang. Like, old uh, Chrono Fang Rebellion, Gigla, like, I want to see some Chrono Fang return. Like, I want to see some, like, because what we've seen so far from Dark States, like, it kind of worries me because I'm not seeing the Gear Chronicle. I'm seeing, like, DI. I'm seeing DI influence. I'm not seeing any Gear Chronicle. That kind of worries me, Loki. I mean, with the first thing from Dark States, it looked like Spike Brothers. But, uh... Because, hmm. like, we, we saw the units being Spikes, but when we saw the actual nation, uh, they were like, oh, it was unified by Chrono Jet. And Chrono Jet is dead now, also, by the way. And it's just like, okay, cool. But in terms of, like, the atmosphere, I'm really not... It's all gothic and like horror esque, and but mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the Gear Chronicle, and that like worries me a little bit. Ah, you think you. That, you'd think that would show up a little more. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. not seeing you guys. I'm not, I'm not seeing steampunk boys. I don't know about this. So actually, uh, going into um, what you're talking about with uh, the whole Tyrant Tiger thing, I do want to take a moment to kind of say that I don't think the trial decks <clears throat> confirm what the character will be playing per se. 
because it's kind of confusing how Yu Yu uh, is showing Nirvana, but then they say his ace card is Trick Star with that card being revealed in the booster set. Hmm. Now, I'm not trying to say that you can run two grade threes, right? Hmm. But what's that saying for, let's say, the three, the other two guy characters? He may hmm. not be playing Spike Brothers. He may be playing something else. Because hmm. I think as well, like, the, the interesting part on that as well is, like, it could end up being, like, an IG situation where in the beginning his avatar was Blaster Blade, but mm -hmm. then his main card became Alfred Early, and then he ends up pulling Gansela, and Gansela becomes his main grade three. And, like, that keeps shifting throughout the seasons. Because, like, they're kind of taking it back to, like, the deck building aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Where, like, oh, like, your deck is going to, like, evolve throughout the, throughout the time you're playing the game. Like, in, as opposed to just being, like, your deck until the new season, I guess. Or, like, until you, yeah. need, some so until you need some sort of plot to appear. And then your <laughs> deck magically changes. Like, I think it was like you were saying that, like, the idea that they could be running different decks. Because I think in our head... Part of where we're like a little bit limited still is that we're still thinking of it, oh, he's playing spikes. Whereas I think the way we should be looking at it is, oh no, he plays dark states. He plays spikes, he plays DI, he plays gears, he plays pale moon. And any derivative of them. Whereas in our heads we're still thinking in terms of clans, we're like, oh, why would he play gears? He's playing spikes. Whereas what we have to understand is that the same thing now. So we're still thinking in terms of archetypes, but their bushy road isn't. If you get me. So yeah, like that deck you. starter could very well be like a baby chronovisor, like you know, like it could be a, it could still be a chrono giant starter. Like it's not going to be, but the point is like they're the same clan. Yeah, you could have you could end up with a deck that's a chrono giant grade one, a, a, a beast tamer grade two, like a, like you know like a like an emblem master grade uh, grade two. Oh sorry, like a beast tamer grade one, emblem master grade two, and a grade three that's Spike Brothers. Like it could, like we don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still speculation, but you know, I, yeah. I thought that was like an interesting thing to like pick on a bit. How like you use Saint there, his uh, ace card is going to be Trick Star and the evolution of him, but then mm. we have Nirvana showing up in the trial deck. Mm. But you know, more information will tell what these characters will actually be playing if it's going to be their trial deck counterparts or not. I do think though that uh, your best girl is going to play that Seraph deck completely. Because we did see a lot of different Seraph um, archetype in the trailer. Because we got like other girls that look like police officers and all that. Team Sato. Pledge your allegiance. Pledge your allegiance. Come on. I'll, pl I'll, I'll, pledge, it. It. I'll pledge it to Seto Kaiba. Close enough. <laughs> Listen, man, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pledge your guys. Please let us know in the comments below who you're pledging your allegiance to. We'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Go, but kind of going off that, like I think... In terms of lore, like, so we're looking at it, but I think the interesting part is seeing, like, when we look at trailers, because we see a lot of clans coming back, or, like, clan aesthetics coming back, uh, alongside a lot of, you know, so obviously we've got Simple Leafs coming back, so we've got the new Simple Leafs archetype, that, but allegedly that's going to have lock, or some variant thereof, because I think the promo for the decks mentioned, like, locking your opponents. <laughs> throwing them to horny jail like you know like it's the great thing about the, <laughs> about oh, these archetypes like i think it'd be interesting seeing how i'm kind of second guessing putting you on the collab but just <laughs> bonk but okay like, the thing is it'd be like, interesting to see how they end up how like different clans end up playing because what you have to understand is like when we're taking this like we were saying earlier to other formats you're basically going to be peppering clan specific mechanics into other clans so you might end up with a deep police deck with lock or like nova grapplers that can lock Exactly. Or like, or like chaos that can multi attack, which, which is super, which is interesting. But at the same time, you, you're seeing that oh, I can probably put this in my dimension police deck to lock one of their units, right? But it doesn't really make it, uh, how you say, uh, synergize. Like it won't mm -hmm. be consistent. You're including this card to stop your opponent, but how far is mm -hmm. one lock going to be, right? What mm. cost is that from putting a unit that continues your multi-attack? Mm. No, for sure, for sure. I think it'll just be one of those fascinating things to see as the cards get revealed. Obviously, mm -hmm. we'll be bringing you guys updates on that. Uh, but I think the issue part will just be seeing like seeing when they get announced. Have a fall through. Keep testing whenever we get things. Because I know for sure we'll probably be testing with a bunch of other people as things start getting announced. Yep. But I was going to say, so speaking of like in terms of... Speaking of kind of like the future of Vanguard. Like... Obviously, you were saying earlier that you're hoping to kind of ride the wave into Overdress. Obviously, yeah. because I think a lot of us want to be want to be somewhat like ready 
for overages when it comes up, so we can have basically help new players, help retiring players, because we were talking earlier. As YouTubers, um, right? Well, not only is that, but also as players, both players ask kind of like and YouTubers to help, have like a platform to help people come in, because we were talking earlier to, um, to obviously Greg and like GD Plays Games and Top Deck Heroes and like Winning Image, and we're talking to a bunch of these people, and we kept just hearing about everybody knowing you know, be between just a couple of people, I mean, a couple dozen people who are like either returning players or new players who are something like really excited about jumping into the game with Overdress with things like, you know, the brand new starter decks, uh, which obviously you can use, go to Golden Phoenix Games and use promo code Naru Samurai uh, to help, you know, to help support us. Because uh, obviously, like, we, we just want to be able to like help people into the game. Because the interesting thing is with like low, low price, like four bucks. Where you have, you know, when they, for example, we have confirmed, um, you know, play sets for most things in those boxes. Like, I think it's so affordable to the point where you can get every starter deck for, like, under 20 bucks. So, yep. like, all these people are, like, excited to jump on now. And with that, we want to have, like, a, a base of people who come in have, like, content they can latch onto and, like, learn the game through. Because it can be a bit of a daunting experience. But, like, jumping off that, how would you want to keep doing what you're doing or change your channel in, in an attempt to like welcome people more in the future or like be a more um broad platform for them when they come in How, what, what would you want to change about your channel towards or do to prepare for that oh so yeah like my plan okay so my plan for uh naru samurai is kind of weird not gonna lie so i originally came in offering that i'm going to be doing this path of series where i'll be talking about certain parts of a clan going on to a man versus where i challenge somebody in the community to a uh, mayor match of that clan to find out where do i stack in comparison right hmm. and i decided to start with my main clan narakami because like that's how my channel is going but with the news of overdress that kind of changes my plans a bit and I am going to finish my man versus guys of uh, Narakami. I will be fighting Alex from Top Deck Heroes. But after that, I am going to make a new type of, how you say, fighting format for my stream. And more of that information is going to come later because I don't have the answers as of yet. I mean, I have the plan. I'm getting, I'm getting estimates because uh, it's a lot of artwork that I need done to get ready for it. Mm. And then I also am going to be coding a few things for this idea I have. Mm -hmm. But overall, expect it to be almost the same thing of man versus. I will collab with other streamers. I will try to be doing battles against them, but in a more fun and appealing way, if you guys can say. But mm -hmm. more information will come soon. Mm -hmm. But overall, guys, I think um, we answered a lot of questions on mine, and I think it'd be only fair if you give Echo some questions. So if you guys want to see us continue on our discussion with Overdress, we do have another four questions for y'all. And you can check that out on Echo CVG or CV2, CVZ, right? Poor Man, name is Yeah, I was going for Vanguard Zero, but uh, CVG was already taken by my old account, and I'll be, I'll be dead if I'm reusing that account. <laughs> okay, but you can go to that YouTube channel, you know, the one that's written right there, and you can also click on the comments section below to enter that, where we'll be continuing our conversation in Echo's channel. Overall, mm. thank you so much for coming by, and see you soon, actually. Like, probably in like two minutes if you guys click away to the next one. Oh, shit, yeah. Good day. Hopefully there's mm. no outbreaks. You're not there yet? What's wrong with you? Oh, crap. Hurry up. <laughs> Alright. See you guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>